Is there anybody out there? Researchers are looking into an intriguing radio wave emission that appears to have originated from Proxima Centauri, the Sun's nearest star neighbor, as part of the most comprehensive hunt for extraterrestrial life yet. The mysterious radio signal coming from Proxima Centauri has sparked a firestorm of rumors and conjecture online. It might perhaps be a calling card from a different civilization out there. Perhaps it is the real deal. Did a planet that is orbiting the closest star send us a message? What or who is sending this odd signal? Let's find out. During observations of Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf located 4.25 light years from Earth in April and May 2019, the 64 meter Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia detected the faint signal. Notably, this weak star has at least two planets, one of which is a super Earth orbiting in the star's habitable zone, the area where a planet with the right conditions could support liquid water on its surface. This super Earth has at least 1.17 Earth masses. Parkes was being used by astronomers to detect radio radiation from the star's strong outbursts. Yet the most sophisticated SETI project in the world, the $100 million Breakthrough Listen project, was concurrently scanning the observations for extraterrestrial signals. Shane Smith, a student at Hillsdale College and a Breakthrough Listen intern, discovered a narrowband transmission at a frequency of 982.002 MHz in a region of the radio spectrum that is rarely used by man-made transmitters buried in the data in late October 2020. The specific method and timing of Park signal detection are not quite clear in the press accounts, although it appears to have occurred five times, each lasting 30 minutes over a number of days, all while the telescope was pointed squarely at Proxima. Significantly, the signal disappeared when the telescope was pointed away from the star. In the end, a 16-foot-wide circle around Proxima Centauri in the sky, roughly half the size of the full moon, seems to contain the bulk of the signal's origin. Breakthrough Listen uses software filters to separate the signals coming from deep space from the noise of signals coming from Earth or satellites orbiting the planet. But this transmission was distinct from any that the project had previously experienced. The signal is known as BLC-1 or Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1 by the researchers, and the word candidate is being emphasized. Even a slight suggestion of extraterrestrial life excites people, even as researchers continue to study the signal and specialists warn that there is almost definitely an ordinary, earthly explanation. Since Proxima Osma was launched, scientists have been searching the skies for radio signals that might have an artificial source. These murmurs from extraterrestrials are believed to resemble the broadcasts humans use to communicate, as opposed to the radio waves the cosmos naturally creates. These transmissions would only operate inside a relatively small band of radio frequencies. As a further indicator that the radio source is emanating from a far-off cosmic object, such as a planet orbiting a star, they would also exhibit a distinct drift that would indicate the source is traveling either toward or away from Earth. The hunt for extraterrestrial life has been protracted and utterly fruitless, at least in terms of trying to uncover extraterrestrial civilizations. The Serbian-American inventor Nikola Tesla thought he had caught radio transmissions from Mars at the end of the 19th century. There is no life on Mars, as far as scientists can tell from countless observations and decades of robotic probe missions. Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell, an astronomer who had contributed to the construction of a new radio telescope in 1967, was sifting through a large amount of data when she noticed an odd signal. That was barely audible, but yet kept repeating. The team thought about little green guys after ruling out any meddling from earthly sources. 
it was discovered that the true source was a pulsar, a neutron star that is spinning and emits radio waves like a heavenly lighthouse. The US alien hunter Jill Tata, who served as the model for Ellie Arroway in the film Contact, thought she had discovered an alien signal in 1997, but it turned out to be a broadcast from an antenna on the SOHO spacecraft, a joint mission of NASA and the European Space Agency to investigate the Sun. An intriguing signal was also found in 2003 by the SETI At Home project, which is managed by the University of California, Berkeley, and uses observations from the defunct Arecibo Observatory as well as the Green Bank Radio Telescope. Three observations of the SHG B02 14A radio burst at 1420 MHz were made before it vanished. The electromagnetic spectrum's waterhole quiet region, which experts believe is a desirable band for extraterrestrial civilizations to broadcast interstellar transmissions, is where the signal is located. Astronomers have found a lot of possible signals over the years. Some of them turned out to originate from as yet undiscovered celestial sources, like pulsars, fast rotating dead star carcasses that radiate radio waves into space. Initially, it appeared as though the first known fast radio bursts, brief radio wave bursts that are still a little mysterious, could be man made messages. Periton signals, which are less intense radio emission bursts, initially puzzled researchers until they discovered a microwave oven as their source. A satellite that has not yet been identified, a plane flying overhead, a transmitter on the ground close to the telescope's line of sight, or perhaps something even more banal, like faulty electronics in a nearby building or a moving car, could all be potential sources of BLC-1's anomalous transmission. Scientists conduct all of their SETI investigations in a complete sea of interference. There are many different signals. It all boils down to being able to distinguish between our own technology and a very distant techno signature. Then there are the signals that astronomers haven't been able to conclusively attribute to a natural source, like the famous WOW signal detected by the Ohio State University Radio Observatory, often known as Big Ear, in 1977, the same year that Star Wars was launched. The telescope caught a 72-second radio wave pulse while studying the Chi Sagittarii group of stars. Dr. Jerry Amon highlighted the information and annotated the readout with WOW to give the signal its name. A message from intelligent extraterrestrials, according to conspiracy theorists, was sent by the WOW signal, which was 30 times stronger than background radiation. It appeared at first that this intensely dazzling assault of radio waves was a genuine SETI discovery, but nobody has been able to confirm it or locate it again. Scientists need to make sure that the BLC-1 signal didn't come from Earth's radio interference or some other natural emission process. For telescopes at various points on Earth, terrestrial interference ought to vary. The radio source should exhibit an 11-day modulation in accordance with the planet's orbital and spin period, if it repeats and is located on Proxima b. But even without looking into the specifics of the incident, one can question if it is conceivable for a radio signal to come from our nearest star system. Everything in our knowledge of the cosmos is consistent with this premise. Contrary to Aristotle's cosmology, which put Earth at the center and was widely accepted for a millennium, the current scientific perspective on the physical universe suggests that Earth-sized planets are found in the habitable zones of roughly half of all sun-like stars that the Milky Way galaxy alone contains tens of billions of sun-like stars, and that the universe has no center but is nearly uniform to within one part in a thousand on the largest scale. The Copernican concept can therefore be legitimately applied to the technological realm. 
Using this line of reasoning, the quantitative study demonstrates that there is very little likelihood that our nearest star will send out a radio signal right now. The Earth-based radio-emitting oscillator that produced BLC-1 most likely had an intrinsic frequency drift that contaminated the telescope's side lobes. There is one qualification to this statement. If there is a correlation between intelligent life on Earth and its nearest star, because of their erratic movements, stars move into and out of the close vicinity of the solar system. It's interesting to note that Proxima Centauri moved closer to us at the same time that Homo sapiens first evolved on Earth. Is that a mere coincidence? In any case, there are more reasons than ever to travel to our nearby planetary system. We might be able to take the first pictures using a probe sent at a small fraction of the speed of light. The Breakthrough Starshot initiative aims to create the technology that would enable us to launch such a probe using a strong 100 gigawatt laser, pushing on a light gram-scale light sail on the length of a human, which is attached to the miniature camera and communication device. What if, just in case, BLC-1 proves to be the actual deal? It would make us wonder if mankind should respond in some way that is within our current capacity. In fewer than 10 years, our message might elicit a response, beginning an interplanetary conversation that would last for the majority of individuals alive today. That's a very intriguing possibility. But this scenario also prompts unsettling queries about our conversation partners. Who are they? Why are they doing this? Do they represent danger? They might have the technology to pick up our TV signals if a developing advanced civilization, perhaps one that is 100 years behind ours, were to start to emerge on Proxima. But there is just enough technology to transmit a straightforward narrowband message back at a frequency that isn't clearly part of the emission spectrum. We obviously can't truly know, as always. Yet if intelligent life at Proxima Centauri can travel through interstellar space at a significant fraction of the speed of light, they might be able to reach Earth in a few decades. For instance, Breakthrough Initiative Starshot Project, which proposes to utilize a strong laser to propel roughly 1,000 extremely light centimeter-sized craft tethered to light sails, is contemplating exactly such an endeavor. This spacecraft may theoretically travel at 15 to 20 percent of the speed of light, which would allow them to arrive at the Proxima system in 20 to 30 years. What would a society from another planet so close by know about us? I find it difficult to believe that a technological civilization on Proxima Centauri would not know about life on Earth, says astrobiologist Jacob Hack Misra of the Blue Marble Space Institute of Science. The only way they would not know is if they are almost exactly at our present day level of technology, so that we are discovering them at the same time they are discovering us. This is generally unlikely because even a thousand year difference between our two civilizations, a short time in astronomy, would lead to drastic differences in our detection capabilities. Currently, the Breakthrough Listen team is working on two academic articles that will present additional information on BLC-1. Also, they are surely attempting to pinpoint any and all potential terrestrial interference sources, as well as finding out if the signal repeats by re-observing with parks and other radio telescopes or by scouring old data. It's hardly a big concern if BLC-1 is just human intervention, which is what it most likely is. Yet if BLC-1 truly is an extraterrestrial signal, it may alter the path of human history. The game would change if an alien radio transmitter appeared just 4.25 light years from Earth. This is undoubtedly the cause of the Discovery Team's silence, as it works diligently to complete its analysis. The Milky Way must, statistically, be absolutely crammed with communicative civilizations if BLC-1 is, against all chances, a postcard from the star system next door. 
Since the discovery, the team has re-examined Proxima Centauri but has not discovered anything. In addition to keeping the Parkes telescope pointed at Proxima, researchers are devising new tests to identify the source of the signal. Even if BLC1 turns out to be caused by radio interference from humans, a thorough examination will aid SETI researchers in improving their search parameters for future searches. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.